Everybody, please be seated. Folks, I trust you had a good lunch. Was there anyone on the panel who was exposed to or participated in any discussions about the case or investigated or unintentionally or purposely sought information? I see no hands. Thanks very much. We'll continue then with the state's case in chief. Attorney Brown. State will call Kelly Bennett to the stand. Hi, Kelly. Come with me. I'm going to go with that gentleman right there. Thank you. Good morning. Good if you're able to comfortably, safely, and with uh, good responsibility testify without a mask, we would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Go right ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Could you please tell us your name and spell it out? Kelly Bennett, K-E-L-L-Y-B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -N -N -E Bennett. Kelly, whereabouts do you live? I live at 111 Oak Spring Circle, Kitty Corner from the Heldersons. Sure. Um, yeah, describe if you could, kind of in as much detail as you could, as where your house is in relation to the Halderson's house. Um, my house is across the street and one down, so it's kitty corner across the street. But the my house is positioned on the lot unusually, and it is the front of my house is facing the side instead of the street. Sure. Um, do you have any security cameras at your house? Yes, several. Um, tell me about just in general, do you have one system or multiple systems? We have two systems. We have a ring doorbell system and we have our son works for the Department of Corrections and he installs all the cameras for the prisons and we have a system that was installed by him. You have a pretty well designed camera system then? Very well. Okay. Um, Good luck to anyone trying to swipe anything from their gaff, I tell you. Yeah, CCTV gets you every time. Yeah, but that place seems like it's bleeding for Knox. It probably is. Were you asked to provide the Dane County Sheriff's Department some camera footage from your house from the early part of July, between maybe July 1st, all the way through uh, maybe the 8th or so at some point this summer? Yes, on July 7th, I heard that they were missing, and I had my husband approach the police officers and volunteer the cameras. Sure. And uh, did you and your husband cooperate fully in turning over your camera footage uh, to the Sheriff's Department? Yes, we, we allowed them to actually log into our system, and they could retrieve any and all footage they needed. And to your knowledge, time and date and things like that were all normal and normally operated on those camera systems? Yes, on those dates. I don't think there's a single one of us that wouldn't do the same, is there? No, absolutely not. I mean, if our neighbour across the street, you know, something was amiss with her, we'd submit all of our doorbell footage, wouldn't we? Of course we would if we were asked for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to show you what's been marked in this case as exhibit number... Um, 49, and you can feel around. Is that a USB drive in there? Sounds, looks, feels like? Yes. Okay. And exhibit number 542. Um, what does the photograph on exhibit number 542 show? My driveway. Sure. That is your driveway? Um, yes. Okay. I would move, uh, and exhibit 49, in the past you've been told that the Dane County Sheriff's Office were able to download your video footage and put it on USB drives, essentially, for trial, correct? Correct. Okay, I'll move exhibits number 49 and 542 into evidence. Any objection? No. Those are received. Ms. Bennett, fair to say you know nothing at all about this investigation other than what you just said, right? Nope. Sorry. Nothing. Uh, correct. I've never even looked at the footage on the cameras from the system designed by my son. And did you know the Haldersons very well? I met her once when I was walking my dog. You just said hello. So you just provided video footage? Correct. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination? No, thank you. May this witness be excused and released from her subpoena? She may. Thank Thanks so much for your time. Have a good rest of your day. You know something? The more a witness comes off the stand and the judge offers the defense the chance to question them and they say, no, thank you, 
the more intrigued I become as to what the defence is actually going to present. I'm actually wondering what the jury's thinking. Yeah, um, well, the jury, obviously, for me, just for my opinion, obviously think that, that he's banged to rights. Well, yeah, because, I mean, the, surely a defence would at least try and discredit the witness. Yeah, I mean, they've not been too impressive, but like we said, they've got nothing to work with. That's true. Nothing! Nothing! State will now call Joelle Lockwood. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you believe you can do so safely and responsibly, testifying without wearing a mask would be the preference, if you could. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record and spell both your first and last name? Joelle Lockwood, J-O-E-L-L-E-L-O-C-K-W-O-O-D. And Ms. Lockwood, uh, what location do you work out of? Uh, 111 Oak Spring Circle, DeForest, Wisconsin. And the person who just testified, Miss Bennett, is that your sister? Yes. And you work out of her home, essentially? Yes. On July 8th of 2021, um, did you answer the doorbell and correspond with a young man um, about camera systems? Yes. And that was captured by some ring doorbell footage? Yes. I assume you didn't know this young man. No. Exhibit 50. Just to show you. It's a thumb drive or USB. Okay. Um, of the ring doorbell footage. Uh, I would move exhibit 50 into evidence at this time. Any objection? None. It is received. Shall we get t-shirts printed up? The Chandler Holderson Ring Doorbell Tour 2021. <laughs> Do you remember about what time of day this was? About three o'clock. Do you wish to publish at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You should be able to see what will be shown on the oh, uh, okay. screen in front of you. Once again, you've pointed this out a couple of times. No sign of his neck brace, is there? No, and he seems to be standing okay. Yeah, absolutely bugger all wrong with him. My name is Chandler Halderson. I live just down the road. Oh, yeah. You're the one with all of the police. Yeah. I was told you had the fancy security system. I was wondering if you were able to capture the road or my house. Um, the, I, the police actually came in and downloaded everything they have. But it, it's actually my sister's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they were here, I think, till like 9 o'clock last night and downloaded all the video she's got. So we're hoping that... Yeah, did it capture anything on... We don't know. We don't know. They just took a copy of everything and 
So we're hoping. Widening the lens. Yeah, and it's all HD. Yeah, and it's all HD. And then I think there's one. Um, Especially in the dark, it looks like it has a little bit of night vision. Yeah, and there's one on the uh, the corner of the garage too. <laughs> It's just struck me for someone who is supposed to be quite slow uh, as a result of a mild concussion. (laughs) He is remarkably astute at um, the finer workings of CCTV and can identify, you know, what a system has just by the look of the outside cameras. Yeah, that seems to be a talent for someone who claims to be stupid. Um, I don't know if that one quite goes that direction, but... Maybe see this road and take it from over here. Yeah, so hopefully, I mean, they, we give them No further questions. Cross-examination? None, thank you. May this witness be excused and released? Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good rest of your day. Stay calls. Captain Schuster. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you believe you can do so safely and responsibly, testifying without your mask would be the preference. Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon. Could you please state and spell out your name for us? It's Catherine Schuster, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, last name Schuster, S-C-H-U-S-T-E-R. Ooh, Catherine seems rather out of breath, doesn't she, as though she's been running? Yeah, but she could be nervous. I mean, she's testifying. Yeah, it could be nerves. Could be, you're right. And ma'am, if I'm asked, where do you live? Um, 4599 Oak Spring Circle in DeForest. Sure. How long have you lived there? A little over four years, I think, approximately. Sure. Um, Just going to ask you some questions first about your neighborhood, okay? Oh, sure. Um, What kind of neighborhood is it? Is it residential? Is it out in the country? Tell me about that. It's a residential neighborhood. Okay. Um, on a little pond. Sure. Do you live on the pond? Yes. Okay. Um, what kind of things do people do on the pond? Uh, right now they're ice fishing or paddle boating or canoeing or probably about it. Were there fish in the pond? Oh yeah, definitely fishing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you know a couple by the name of Bart and Krista Halderson? Yes. How did you know them? They were my next door neighbors to the west of me. Okay. Um, and they moved in, I think, approximately six months prior to uh, my family moving in. Okay. And uh, when, I, when you say you knew them, how, how well did you know them? Um, well, I knew Bart better than Krista. Krista was a little more reserved. Bart, um, de- you know, definitely talked a little bit more. I always saw him outside throwing the frisbee for his dogs and fishing. And, um, you know, my my husband and Bart would text sometimes or talk. And so, um, you know, ju- I knew him as, as well, you know, neighborly. Sure. Um, I think you alluded to some of it. Bart would be out um, fishing or be in the yard with the dogs. What type, is that the extent of it? Or are there other things you'd see the Haldersons outside doing? Uh, sometimes they would have a bonfire. Okay. Um, they did a lot of lawn work. They really made their yard uh, like very beautiful. They did a lot of different things to it, so they, they always were doing a lot of yard work. We're hearing these tales of a completely normal family out in suburbia, um, of bonfires, of barbecues, of uh, mowing the lawn. We're hearing, you know, tales of a normal family here, right? This is psychological, if you think about it, because these are times that Chandler will never, ever, ever experience again. Even if he went free, he'd never have those times again. 
that his parents was able to, were able to give him. So, I wonder now whether he actually feels any culpability or guilt or his conscience has pricked him over what he's done. I don't think it would have. To be honest, judging from the way he's acted, the way he is, the way he handled this whole thing, there's no way he would feel anything about what he's done. Could it be... And I'm not trying to humanise or moralise or, or normalise what he's done, right? But could it be that his decision to murder his parents was a snap decision? And when he murdered his dad, he thought, in for a penny, in for a pound, I can't go back now, I may as well follow it through. And then everything was just done by the seat of his pants, you know, ever since then. And could it be that he regrets not having stepped back and thought about it a bit more, do you think? Do you think that's possible? I don't think that entered his head. I mean, look at the lies he went about. No, I'm, I'm not talking about then, I'm talking about now. He's languishing in prison. Yeah, he's languishing in prison, but then again, if he felt any culpability or anything, I think he would have took the stand. Not, well, yeah. There is that reasoning, but there is also the way of looking at it. If he did feel any culpability or any guilt, he would reveal exactly where every single body part of his parents were buried or, or left. Because so far he hasn't given all of that information up, has he? No, I don't think he will. Sure. And uh, your neighborhood, do people take care of their lawns? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Very... Uh... Everybody is very particular about their their lawns. Uh, does it at times feel like maybe there's a little bit of a competition between people and who does it um, best? Sure, yeah, definitely. If you if you're behind, you better get um, you better get your yard mowed or your leaves picked up. Okay, where do you rank in this lawn contest? Uh, my husband's pretty. Uh, I mean, I don't rank too high okay. personally, but my husband definitely is. You know, like, for example, him and Bart kind of had a thing where, like, Bart would mow and then my husband would be like, oh, you know. Bit of five o'clock shadow under the face flannel there. Bart mowed, I better mow, or, or vice versa. That would okay. happen. Sounds good. Did you know the Halderson boys at all, the, their, their children, Chandler and Mitchell? Uh, no. I mean, I had seen them. I had not seen Mitch as much as I had seen Chandler. But I had only interacted with, or I, I have only interacted with Chandler twice and, since they lived there. Okay. Um, in early July of last year, so after the 4th of July weekend, maybe going into the 7th, 8th, that time period, um, at some point, did Chandler come over to your house? He did. Okay. Uh, now, do you have any security cameras at your house? We do. And uh, were those full functioning and operational the day that Chandler came over? Yes, they were. Okay. Um, at times, do you turn the security cameras off? Yes, I did. Why do you turn the security cameras off? Sometimes I turn the notification. Well, I didn't turn the camera off, but I turned the notifications off so that um, if there was a large influx of packages coming, then my husband wouldn't get like all the notifications. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, he was at work. I think that scheme's being pulled on me right now. But, um, so you had a camera system. Sometimes you turn the, turn the notifications off and, and, and the footage would maybe go away eventually. Uh, but Chandler came over one of these days. Right. And did you talk to him outside or did you invite him inside? I invited him in. Inside. So if your security camera picked up anything that day, it would have just been that brief ring of the doorbell, pleasantries, and then inviting him inside? Yes. Okay. And did you provide that footage to Dane County Sheriff's deputies? Did your family when asked in this case? I did. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 52. Um, just to feel around, that feels like a USB drive, doesn't it? Yes. And that'd be consistent with someone's video footage kind of being transferred over for court, right? Sure, I would right. imagine so. I'll move 52 in evidence. Any objection? No objection. It is received. For the court record, I'll move 53, uh, not to be published. Any objection to 53? No. 
It is received. And I'll move to publish 52. You may publish. What's going to be seen, you'll be able to see on the screen in front of you, rather than needing to strain your neck. Oh, sure. Right. Okay, thank you. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. But I've been going through the motions. All right. So that showed essentially Mr. Halderson showing up and then him leaving when your your camera again gets activated by his movement. Correct. All right. And do you have any reason to doubt that the time on the bottom there and the date of, of July eighth, around eight thirty to eight thirty six, that sound about right to you? Uh, yes, okay. I I thought he came over at 808 wait, and wait, wait, left wait. 18 minutes later. Sure, about an 18 to 20 minute conversation. Right? Yes. Um, nothing that was inside was recorded, of course. No. Okay. Um, let me ask you some questions about sure. that, though. Sure. Um, when Mr. Halderson first came in, uh, what did he tell you? I'm sorry, could you well, repeat? Yeah, what did he tell you was going on when he first came in your home? Uh, well, he, he didn't... He, he just came in. He just he took his shoes off, and I, and you know, I said to him, "I'm not very tech savvy. It's going to take me a minute, you know, to pull up the cameras and see what we have." And then, and he came in. He sat down on the floor against uh, one of our like oversized chairs. He sat down on the floor. If someone came in my house and sat down on the floor, I'd be like, we've got a perfectly good bloody couch here you can sit on, lad. Get, get your ass up. Well, yeah. why would someone sit on the bloody floor in a complete stranger's house? Maybe he's trying to act like he's in shock. In shock by sitting on the floor? <laughs> what a prat. And then... Um... You know, my dog went up to him, and I sat next to my dog, and I proceeded to look at the footage. He, I don't recall him saying anything at, at that time. Sure. Um, did he talk about anything in your house for that 18 yes. minutes? Yes. Tell me about that. What well, do you I asked him some questions. So, um, so I think, I believe while I was looking up some of the footage... You know, I, I had made a reference to Minecraft, which is because it was on the TV, which is probably irrelevant. But and then, you know, that was just a brief conversation. And then I found the footage and I said, you know, unfortunately, the, the camera was off from 6-2 to um, I believe it was or I'm sorry, 6-30 to 7-2, which was June 30th to July 30, July 2nd. And then again, it was on the third, off again the fourth to the seventh. And then, so he's like, okay, well, I, most cameras don't go to the road. I didn't, just thought I'd check. And then um, I said to him, you know, so your parents, why didn't your parents take their car? And he said, well, a couple picked them up Friday morning, which would have been, July 2nd, uh, prior to me getting up at 6.15, they were gone. And I said, oh, okay, and you don't know who they, they went with? And he said... And I keep coming back to this. This is a massive hole in his story as far as I'm concerned. If he was asleep before his parents supposedly left, how did he know they went with a couple? Yeah, and how did he know they all went in the same car? Exactly. This is the massive, massive plot hole, isn't it? Exactly. No, I've called other friends. I don't know. Nobody, they didn't go with anybody, and maybe it was one of my dad's clients. Um, you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay, and then um, he said, well, they took my parents' computer today. 
um, you know, but they're, they're not going to, they didn't take my dad's computer. He has a high security job and they weren't able to take that. And I said, oh, I'm sure, you know, they'll get a, a subpoena to get that that computer and he's like wow they'll they'll never get into that computer it's just too high tech and i said well i i think they will you know basically the police will get into it and, and then i just asked him about debit cards i just was said um you know di are they looking at their debit card records you know to see where they've been or whatnot and he said you know no they don't use debit cards when they go up north. They always take cash because they don't have any sliders. And I said, okay, and then... Sliders and meaning the, as, like a credit he card. He referred machine. to it as sliders, but yeah, he, I took that to mean debit card machines or credit card machines. Bollocks! Did you ask him about his parents' phones and tracking them? I did. I, then next I said, well you know, what about their phone records? Are they looking at their phone records? And he said, no, they can't get their phone records unless they have a dead body. Hello, what planet are you living on? And I said, well, um, you know, they'll, they'll definitely subpoena those. I'm sure it'll take some time. And I don't know if that's the right verbiage, subpoena, whatever, but um, it'll take some time, but they'll absolutely be able to get phone records. And, you know, and then, um, he said, well, I think the person down the street has some high security cameras. And I said, oh, do you mean Kelly? And he said, who? And I just said, you know, the person that lives in the blue house down the street. And he said, I think I'll have to visit her. And then um, I think that was the majority of the conversation. Besides that, I said, you know, you know, he got up, I said, you're going to be so happy when they pull in your driveway. You're just going to be so happy and it'll be okay. And he said, no, I'm going to give him earful. I'm angry. We're all really angry. And I said, well, no, you know what I mean? Like when your child goes missing and you're mad, they ran away, but you're really just really happy you found them. And he said, no, the whole family is just very angry and we're all going to give him earful. If what she's just said is true and we have got no reason to doubt her, have we? No, we haven't. Then his neck is more brass than Bet Lynch, I tell you. Well, yeah, I mean, instead of being happy if he found his parents, he was just going to give them an earful. Yeah, but he, he says that after he murdered them in such an unspeakable fashion and, and disposed of them in such an, you know, a, an inhuman way. I know, that's why and, I... And then he says that. <laughs> That's why I said he doesn't feel anything. Bloody hell. And I said, okay, well, you know, oh, I asked if I could help with his dogs too. And during this conversation, some sometime he said no. Um, and I said, okay, well, you know, anything we can do, or, you know, either we're praying for you or we're thinking about you. One of those things I would, I would say, I, I recall saying, but I don't know which one. <laughs> um, and then and that was it sure. then i watched him walk in the direction of the neighbor across the street you said when he came to your house where did he sit again on the floor against uh we have a big oversized chair <coughs> and i had pulled the ottoman out it's an oversized ottoman and i had pulled that out so he could sit on the chair but he he may have for, felt more comfortable on the floor and he sat on the floor with his back against the ottoman or the, not the ottoman, the chair. Oh. Weird buckaroo, aren't you? Did he seem to you to have any physical trouble getting up and down? Not that I noticed. Um, his, what was his demeanor like or his effect when he was telling you these things about um, maybe his parents being gone? It, it's hard to describe. I would, I would guess uh, kind of a quiet nature, I would say. Like... Um, would appear to be down, maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, police contacted you at some point, I would imagine. They did. And you've been cooperative all the way through with the police, helping them out with video and talking to them about your conversations? Yes. All right, thank you. No further questions. Okay, thank you. Cross-examination? No, thank you. 
May this witness be excused and released. She may be. Thank you so much for Thank your you. assistance and Thank have you. a good rest of your day. You as well. Thank you. What's the bet? She gets out of there, goes home, and everyone says to her, so what was it like testifying? And she was like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, probably. Oh, okay. Uh, Deputy Wilkes, who the state's going to call. Good afternoon, Deputy. If, Good if afternoon. you are able to safely and responsibly testify without your mask, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Counsel. Good afternoon. Um, could you please state your name, both first and last for the record, and spell both first and last? Michael Wilk. It's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-W-I-L-K. And how are you employed? I'm employed with the Dane County Sheriff's Office as a Deputy Sheriff. And what's are your job responsibilities? I work a task force position. Uh, within that position, I may be assigned to multiple divisions throughout the sheriff's office, including mm -hmm. the bailiff's office, field patrol responsibilities, security in the jail, conveyances. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, I also am pulled for special assignments, which I was in this case. In football terms, he would be a utility player. Excellent point and very well made. And what was your assignment in this case? My assignment in this case was to assist with video review, as there was a great deal of video that was brought in. And specifically, were you asked to look at the video from a witness named Kelly Bennett's house, which was 111 Oak Springs Circle in DeForest, Wisconsin? I was. And... How many hours of that video do you think you watched? It was approximately seven, well, it was seven days worth the video, 24 hours a, um, in a day. So you can do the math. It was a great so, deal of video. So you were the lucky person assigned to watch every minute of that video. Yes, I was. And what were you looking for when you watched it? I was looking for all general activity that could be observed from the address on Oak Springs, I believe it's 4595, if I'm not mistaken. So the 111 Oak Springs video shows at least a portion of the 49 or the 4595 house and driveway. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, during the course of this investigation, is it your understanding that um, this video was then edited just to show the moments in time where a video, where a vehicle or person arrived and departed from the location? Yes, that is correct. Um, and you've had a chance to preview this video? Yes, I have. Um, and were all the vehicles and persons that you saw arriving and departing from the Halderson home captured on this compilation video? Yes, they were, with the exception of law enforcement vehicles on the 7th, because as there were numerous of them, those were not included in the video. Sure, those didn't have any investigative leads since you no, knew they did not. who they were. Um, and during the course of this investigation, were you able to identify what vehicles were assigned or associated to the Halderson home? Yes, I was. Um, and I certainly, I know you review lots of videos with lots of different vehicles. I assume you don't have license plates, makes and models memorized. No, I do not. Instead, you detail them in a report that you could review later. Correct. Okay. If I were to show you a report that you wrote in association with this case, would that help refresh your recollection as to the make and model of the vehicles associated with the Halderson home? Yes, it would. It's 1688 of discovery. Exactly. That is a task that I do not envy him, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, imagine going through all of that. Yeah, seven days of video, 24 hours a day. I'm, I'm sure, he, you know, he must have had some of it, if not on fast forward, then on some kind of speed so that he could still easily discern if something, you know, came into the field of vision. Yeah, if something appeared not right. Yeah, but it must have taken, you know, quite a bit of manpower from him to do this. And hours of time. Yeah, kudos to him for getting through it. And basically there were three vehicles that were 
vehicles associated with the Halderson home. Correct. What was the make and license plate of the first vehicle? The first vehicle was a Subaru Outback uh, premium sport utility truck. Uh, license plate number was 34269 Union. And uh, who was that registered to? That was registered to Bart Halderson. What was the second vehicle associated with the Halderson home? Second vehicle was a Volvo V70 station wagon, license plate number 34270 Union. And who was that car registered to? That vehicle was registered to Krista Halderson. And was there a third vehicle associated with the Halderson home? Yes, there was. And what was that vehicle? Uh, that vehicle was a Subaru Forester 2.5X premium sports utility with a license plate number of 718 Victor Edward Robert. And who was that vehicle registered to? That vehicle was uh, registered to Dulce Melander. I may have may not pronounce her name correctly. And in the course of this investigation, did you learn that was the defendant's girlfriend's mom? Yes, I did. So that was the car the girlfriend presumably drove. Correct. State would now move to publish Exhibit 49 to the jury, the compilation video. Can we pause it just for a second? So, Deputy, just to, there's two boxes here. Um, yes. Is it fair to say that part of the video is enhanced to really look at the driveway that we want to look at? Yes, the portion of the video in the upper right-hand corner is the true view of the camera as you would see it if you were to watch it without enlarging any portion of it. The bottom portion is an enlarged um, portion of the area that captures the front driveway and front entryway of 4595 Oak Springs Circle. All right, thank you. And he had to go through a week's worth of footage, 24 hours a day, just of those images. That's what you call dedication to duty. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't go blind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Deputy, we're So fair to say on July 1st at 7.30, a Volvo departs. Yes, that is correct. And now we're looking at July 1st at 5.13 p.m., a Volvo enters the driveway. And then at 8.16 p.m., a Volvo departs the driveway. Is that right? Yes. And then about 15 minutes later at 8.29, the Volvo arrives. Correct. Again. I imagine gormless boy is sitting there at the defence table wishing a huge hole would swallow him. It never occurred to him that the police would be this fastidious, I don't think. I don't think he probably thought they wouldn't be able to recover anything. No. Gormless prat. And then July 2nd at 7.02, the Halderson Subaru departs. Yes. I'm surprised he can bear to be parted from his bloody couch fort. And 
and that same vehicle appears to arrive at 7.31 a.m. Correct. And then the labels do continue the rest of the video. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so what follows um, is 24 minutes, basically, of, um, you know, various cars drawing up um, from um, Chandler Subaru to Kat's car. You see Chandler take the trash out as well. And it's basically 24 minutes and there's no sound. There's no, it's just pictures. Really not much for us to provide commentary on. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed it up. Um, we're going to speed it up it's just so everything happens within the next couple of minutes so that you can see it. So yeah. we'll speed it up to like two minutes. Um, you should be able to see everything arriving, everything leaving. Hopefully you won't miss anything. Um, but just in the interest of time, it's probably better, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. And that was the full compilation video, Deputy? Yes, that is correct. So on July 2nd, we don't see any vehicles arriving or departing between midnight until after 7 a.m. Is that, that fair? Yes, it is. And I just wanted to point out one thing. On July 7th, according to that video, there was a white vehicle that pulled in. Then the Subaru pulled in. It looked like there was a little bit of interaction and uh, then the white vehicle pulled out. Correct. Were you made aware later that that was about an air conditioning quote? Yes, uh, something of that nature or the general contractor that was doing work at the house. Okay. No further questions. Cross-examination? No, thank you.
Here we go again. May this witness be excused and released. He can be excused, but not released. Excused from today, but not yet released from your subpoena. So don't discuss your testimony with anyone else. Thank you much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely essential to show that compilation because it establishes the prosecution's timeline, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah. And for those of you um, who were rather perturbed that we uh, sped that up, we apologise. You can slow it down in YouTube if you click the little um, cog, the little settings icon, it should let you do it. State of Wisconsin calls Brett Halverson to the stand. Good afternoon. If you believe you can safely and responsibly testify without wearing a mask, it would be our preference if you could. Every time he says that, I thank God it's all over. Thank you so much, sir. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record and spell both your first and last name? Uh, My name is Brett Halderson, B-R-E-T-T. Last name Halderson, H-A-L-D-E-R-S-O-N. I'm going to ask you to grab the base of the microphone. You can sit comfortably. That you can pull up closer. The the fans are on right now, so it's becoming a little bit harder to hear, folks. Thank you. All right. Brett, your last name is Halderson. Were you related to Bart and Krista Halderson? Yes, Bart is my brother. When... um they said state of Wisconsin calls Brett Halderson. We kind of looked at each other, didn't we? Yeah. And we kind of said uncle. Yeah, so... We were right, weren't we? We were, yeah. yeah. Um, were you the older brother, the younger brother? I'm an older brother by about four years. Okay. So you knew Bart his entire life? Yes. Um, and you knew Krista, Chandler, and Mitchell as well? Yes. Um... What was your relationship like with Bart, Krista, and the kids? Um, General good relationship with them. We would have family get-togethers at holidays. We would talk over the phone occasionally, um, maybe send an occasional text message back and forth. And how would you describe Bart and Krista as parents towards Mitchell and Chandler? They were good parents, very nurturing. Um, Krista was very involved with her children. Um, I know it was mentioned like helicopter mom, but she was very attuned to everything that they were into. They were supportive in that anything they were involved in was school, with swimming. Um, they were lifeguards. They promoted those things. Um, they got them through Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts was very big in our family, and that followed through with them in raising their boys. Okay. Every time we hear a family member or a friend or a neighbour say what wonderful parents they were, we we just can't help wondering how could he do this? There was no motive behind it. What? I mean, I could understand it if there were abusive parents, but there weren't. No. It's just... I don't think we'll ever make sense of it, will we? I don't think we will. How did you learn about your brother and his wife being missing? Um, I believe the information went to my aunt and uncle, was referred over to my parents, and my parents gave me a call. And Brett, just to put this in some context, what did you do as a career? Um, I worked as a police officer or deputy chief for the Menasha Police Department. What did you do upon hearing that Bart and Krista were missing? Uh, Initially, my first impression is Statistically, they probably were out of phone range. Everything would be fine, and we would probably locate them or have communication with them within the next couple hours. Um, So at that time, I 
I believe I made a phone call to them just to see if I could get a hold of them, try to get things straightened out as soon as I could. What is the next thing you decided to do after that in regards to them being missing? Um, after that, I believe just to get more information, I made phone contact with Chandler just to see where they were expected to be, what was going on with their life, where they were going, um, and I guess to find out the different avenues where we'd be able to make contact with them. And what did you learn from Chandler? Um, he had mentioned that they were going up north. I think the big piece of information that was valuable was that they had left with an unknown person or couple. I think the male was believed to be a Dan um, and left in that person's vehicle. And with that information, I, I prompted him to, you know, try to find out who this Dan might be. Um, I did even mention about finding if the neighbors across the street had a ring camera that may have got in that vehicle and a license plate that would be able to help us identify the person. Something's just struck me. If all the people that Chandler talked to over the, the, the days after he murdered them, um, and this ranged from neighbours to family members to friends. Not a single one of them said that he sounded funny or he sounded weird or he sounded out of the ordinary. And they totally believed... I mean, they had no reason to disbelieve him, did they? No, of course not. But that just strikes me as odd that none of them could kind of smell a rat in how he was actually saying it, because he must have been as cool as a cucumber while while imparting this information. But then again, if your liberty could be at stake, you're probably liable to act in any way, aren't you? You are, and he was probably also trying to take precautions to not slip up. Yeah. Uh, did Chandler seem to take your advice and... Um... And was he able to answer your questions? Yes. Yes. Matter of fact, he had gone across the street, and then shortly after speaking with uh, Mr. Kevin Linsmeyer, I received a phone call from Kevin Linsmeyer saying that he was over there and just wanted to make sure that I was aware of everything that was going on. Okay. What did you do next as Bart and Krista continued to be missing? Uh, I know I had the opportunity to speak with sheriff's deputies, and then later the investigators, and I guess afforded them any information I could, as well as gathering pictures for, you know, lost people, a poster, um, getting anything that we could to help find them. Are you, during this time period, are you in um, pretty frequent contact with Chandler? Uh, I believe multiple times a day, yes. Okay. Um, are you learning any more pieces to the story um, throughout your contact with Chandler? Um, as we spoke, and I, I guess was prodding for more and more information, he did reveal that there was health problems. Um, I was aware of my brother having psoriasis and some arthritis related to that, but he did bring up the information that Krista had uh, some type of cancer that he was recently made aware of as well as, I believe, the, the small stroke. Um, and with that, it opened up the uh, possibility that they may have gone somewhere to receive treatment for that and maybe just hadn't been giving that information to the family because they wanted to keep that personal. Okay. First question there is obviously, why would they possibly do that? There's no reason for them to do that, is there? Unless they didn't want the family worrying. Well... When, I mean, you ask that question, why would they possibly do that? But um, there is the possibility that, you know, they could have gone for some sort of experimental treatment and the side effects were possibly something that the family wouldn't agree to. So I suppose in that scenario, then, yeah, it would be plausible. But that's about the only one I can think of. Yeah, but some people, when they've got an illness and they go somewhere for treatment they don't want anyone to worry until they've got something to worry about yeah all well and good but what you got to remember is krista doted on those boys exactly so it's out of character yeah, for her completely out of character um during the course of all these different discussions you're having with chandler at any point does he float the idea to you that 
um, perhaps they're out drinking somewhere? I don't believe that ever came up, no. Does he ever explain to you that they took a bunch of tools and a large amount of cash to the cabin? I believe he mentioned the tools and the cash um, as far as going up to the cabin to do some repairs, yes. Did he mention the possibility of a casino trip to you? He did not mention anything about a casino, and I'm not familiar with my brother or Chris ever visiting casinos for entertainment. Um, with your brother being a CPA, uh, did it seem likely to you whether or not he'd have a large amount of cash on hand in a safe in his home? Um, knowing my brother, I never known him to have a large amount of cash on his person or in his home. He would have kept that, I would believe, more secure. And he believed in investments. Is that fair to say? Yes. I want to uh, turn your attention now to um, some of the other things that you knew or may not have known about Chandler. What did you think Chandler was doing as far as schooling? Uh, I believe he was a student at uh, the Madison Area Technical College or the Madison College. I believe it's changed how it's referred to. And did you ever talk to him about like what sort of classes he was taking or anything like that? Um, I know Bart had mentioned in the past that he was involved in solar energy. Um, at a holiday when we had gotten together, Chandler had mentioned that he was doing something with IT security. And his uncle had no idea that all he was doing was sitting in his room, playing his games and twirling his bollocks around. And he was in a class where their first assignment was to write a kind of a Trojan program that could be placed on a server somewhere, sent via email, that would, once placed, either by request or automatically, would send information from that server back to them. And that was done as a learning skill for an IT person. Okay. Um, what did you think Chandler was doing as far as work? Um, I believed he was doing an internship at uh, American Family. Did you know of any more details as to what he was doing there or anything? Uh, in, in talking with Bart, I believe it was something dealing with uh, IT services, uh, nothing more beyond that. He's not mentioned that uh, Chandler was apparently Wisconsin's answer to Jack Cousteau, has he? No, not yet. What, if anything, did you know about Chandler's potential concussion? Uh, I was not aware of any concussion. I was not aware of that. Up until when I was speaking with him after Bart and Chris were found missing, um, he did bring that up as a point where he wasn't able to drive long distances or shouldn't be going out far, you know, in his vehicle driving. But before their disappearance, I was not aware of any concussion. Have you ever went scuba diving with your nephew Chandler? Oh, hello, here we go, scuba boy. Yes. How many times? Um, it was, I, I'm a scuba instructor. Um, I was able to talk my brother into having him and his two sons trained or certified in scuba diving. I think it was in September of 2019 they had come up to my house. I live in the outside of Appleton in the Hilbert area. Um, they had done the online turning, training. We did a pool session, and then we did an open water session. Um, actually, enough dives to get them certified as scuba divers. So in two locations, in the a lake or some body of water and in the pool? Yes. So two times? Um, well, yeah. At, at the pool and uh, open body of water, yep, and all within the same weekend. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me if he dove down in all his scuba gear and tried to make a fort underwater. Yeah, just trying to be better than everyone else. Did you and Chandler ever have discussions about um, police diving? Um, I believe at some holiday 
family get together after he was certified, he had broached the topic of what it takes to become a public safety diver. At that time, we discussed back and forth that it usually happens if you're part of a, a law enforcement agency or potentially on a fire department that has a dive team. And those were usually the two main ways of getting on a dive team. And then occasionally you'll find a, a civilian form public safety dive team. And how would you know that information? Um, I'm, uh, I was on, or I'm currently on the Calumet County dive team. I was on the Winnebago County dive team when I was working for the Menasha Police Department. I'm also a public safety diver instructor, so I work with numerous dive teams. So he actually walks the walk. Yeah, and he actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah, whereas it appears Chandler talks louder than he tiptoes. And to your knowledge, was Chandler ever on a rescue dive team associated with any law enforcement? No, he was not. What about the DNR? Was he on anything to your knowledge? Not to my that? knowledge, no. Mr. Halderson, when was the last time you talked to your brother, Bart? It would have been the morning of July 1st. Is there any reason you remember that date? Um, because that's my birthday. Our family makes it a ritual of contacting each other on our birthdays. And that was the phone call that he had made to me that morning. Is that the last time you spoke to your brother? Yes. Oh, God, I feel for him, do you? Yeah, he looks really upset. Yeah, well, he's got a reason to be. And you know something? He can't properly celebrate his birthday now because his brother was murdered on his birthday. He's done his whole family wrong. Yeah. No further questions. Any cross-examination? Good afternoon, Mr. Halderson. Okay. Do you need a glass of water or anything? We can take a break if you need something. I should be good for now. And I just have a couple questions for you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, to confirm, you said that you live outside, just outside of Appleton? I, I live in Hilbert, okay. Wisconsin, yep. Okay, but not in Dane County, Wisconsin. No, no. Um, how often would you say you did come over to Dane County to visit Bart and Krista? Yeah, um, it was not very frequently that we were down there. Um, they were very COVID conscious. So when COVID was around, they had not been up by us. Um, they had not hosted any events. Um, I visited them last. September of 2020, where Bart and I had gone out scuba diving at Devil's Lake. And before that was probably sometime in earlier 2019. Okay. How about just regular phone conversations with Bart or Krista? How often would you say you did that? Um, very rarely would I have a phone conversation with Krista. Um, with Bart, I believe it was Every couple of months, every three months, maybe we'd have a conversation while I was out walking the dogs and I would either just have a desire to speak with him or I had a tax question and it would be an opportunity to speak with him. And as far as the information that you provided to Chandler about what he should do, is it fair to say that you were providing that information because of your prior experience in law enforcement or something that you would have provided regardless? I would have, I, I guess I provide anything to help find my brother and his wife. But um, I guess, and I apologize, what I was getting at is the telling Chandler to go seek out rig footage or to talk to neighbors. Is that something that perhaps was a little easier for you to suggest because of your experience in law enforcement? Maybe I was more aware of it because of my experience in law enforcement, but just knowing camera systems and knowing that sometimes they're not kept more than 24 hours, 48 hours or longer. Um, and I wasn't aware of what Dane County was doing at the time. I thought it just would be prudent to try to preserve any information that would potentially have a license plate of a vehicle that stopped there that day. Sure, and that's that's exactly why you provided that information yes. for Chandler. 
As far as Krista's family, are you aware she's close to her family? Objection relevance. Overruled. You can answer if you know. Um, I know she has brothers and sisters throughout the United States. I know she was very, very close with her mother while her mother was alive. We've had very few questions asked by the defence so far, and I don't think a single one of them has made any sense. They're not making any sense at all, the defence. What the hell has whether Krista was close with her family got to do with the fact that she was murdered so brutally by her own son? It's got nothing to do with that. It's irrelevant. I have no further questions. Thank you so much. Any redirect? No, no further questions. May Mr. Halderson be released and uh, uh, excused? He may. Thank you, sir, for your time today. We could take up one more witness if it's of the same length of time. Sure. It's going to call Jay Gilbertson to the stand. Sir, if you are willing and believe you can safely and responsibly testify without a mask, that would be our preference at this point. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Could you please state and spell your name, both first and last, for the record? Uh, Jay Gilbertson. First name J-A-Y. Second name G-I-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. Where do you live, Mr. Gilbertson? Could you, uh, I have a lot of trouble hearing. Can you? Oh, sure. Yep, yell at me if I'm not loud enough. Where do you res- or where did you reside in July of 2021? Uh, in the forest, uh, right next door to the Haldersons. Okay. To the west. And did you know Bart and Krista Halderson? Yes. Uh, just as neighbors, or anything more? Pretty much just neighbors. You know, cordial. How you doing in the backyard? Type stuff. Never, never at their house inside their house, never did anything with them, just that kind of cordial relationship. If it's anything like the UK, it'd be like, clean your doorstep, you bloody mucky bugger. Yeah, it would be. (laughs) Sure. Um, Before the events of Bart and Krista going missing, did you know Chandler Halderson? Um, I may have seen him, but I'm not sure I knew the two brothers apart, you know, which one was Mitchell and which one was Chandler. I know I've waved to to the boys at least one or two times. Okay. And um, on July 8th, do you happen to have, you end up having a conversation with Chandler Halderson. Is that true? That is true. What was the nature of that conversation? Uh, he stopped over about 8.30, I think, in the morning. Um, I, he said, hi, I'm Chandler. I'm paraphrasing. Um, I said, hi. I said, it's really weird about your parents. Um, he goes, yeah. And um, I said, it's, uh, you know, I said, I asked him something about uh, the people that he went with or the people that they went with. And were they missing too? Um, He said not necessarily or he didn't know. He talked about um, sending a friend or a relative to his parents' cottage to look for him. And um, he also asked if we had a security camera or surveillance equipment, and I said no, we didn't. Um, Okay, did you have any discussion at all about a neck brace? Uh, I did ask him, I said, are you the one with, that fell down and has a, had a neck brace, or was that your brother? And he said, no, it was me. And I said, oh, was, don't have to wear it, I guess, or something like that. And was he wearing it on the 8th? No. 
was he bollocks? No, because all he was doing was laying, was laying his skinny little ass off. Yeah, yeah. There was no need for him to keep up the pretense anymore. The, the people he was most afraid of finding out were both dead. Yeah, but there was also his brother f- finding out too. Yeah, but that wouldn't have been as severe, I don't think, in his eyes. It wouldn't have been severe anyway, I don't think. Um, and you said you had a discussion with him um, about the other couple. Did you mean the couple that um, supposedly had picked up right, Bart and Krista? Right, I said, well, have you heard from them? Are they missing too? And uh, he said no. Or not, not that he knows of or something along those lines. And he said, uh, I said, well, if, if they're missing, how are your parents going to get back from the cabin or something along those lines? And he said he didn't think they were with them or they were coming back or it was kind of vague. Do you remember telling detectives um, in connection with this investigation that Chandler had told you that the other couple might have just continued on with their trip? Yes. Did that make any sense to you? No. I'd never seen Bart or Krista get in the car with anybody else. Okay. And what was Mr. Hal- what was Chandler Halderson's demeanor like during this conversation with you? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Oh, I'm sorry. What was Mr. Halderson Chandler's demeanor like during this conversation with you? Um, it was a, it was a little maybe not nervous because I can't really tell. I'd only never spoke with him, but maybe a little nervous or detached or um, not all the way tuned in. He, as soon as I said uh, some other people might have surveillance cameras in the neighborhood, he said, "Well, he was going to go talk with them." And then he just left, turned around, and I said, I think we said something like, good luck. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Any cross-examination? Just to be clear, Mr. Gilbertson, you've never spoken with Chandler Halderson before that day, correct? I do not not think so. Again, I don't know. I didn't really know the names of the two brothers. I might have said hi, but it was never a long conversation. And when you say you never saw Krista or Bart get into a car with other people, it's fair to say you're not watching them all the time, correct? No, absolutely not. Thank you. It's a perfect question to ask because, you know, and reasonable, because sometimes you could just catch something. You could be looking just on the off chance and something could happen. Yeah, something out of the corner of your eyes, you're passing the window, you never know. Any redirect? No. May this witness be excused and uh, released from his subpoena? Yes. Sir, thank you for your time today. All done. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. That takes us to a 90-minute mark, folks. So I think it's a good point to take our afternoon break, and uh, we'll see you back here just before 3 o'clock. All right, for the jury. 